Hey guys, Richard here with eBike Reviews and Adventures. In a recent video we released, we were talking about the number one mistake that manufacturers make when they design and build these bikes. And it also happened to be the number one thing, number one spec that you should be looking for as a consumer just to make sure you know what you're getting so that the bike performs the way you're hoping it to perform. Now, if you haven't seen that video, make sure you go check it out. I'll put a link to it above. But you need, to, you need to understand that there are ways to improve your ride. So what today's video is all about, we're going to be changing out the front crank right here on this Ansky S700. And we're going to put a bigger one on it. This one right here is a 48 tooth, tooth, which means there's 48 individual teeth around there. And by making the front crank just a little bit bigger, it's going to eliminate some of that ghost pedaling at the higher speeds that we want to achieve because currently and i'm going to show you in some video here in a moment you know when you're riding at a higher speed you start ghost pedaling because there's just not enough gears okay you, the gear in the back doesn't go high enough it's a seven speed it's not an eight speed but this front crank is just a little too small so by changing it out and it's easy to do making it just a little bit bigger will have more resistance at that higher speeds let me show you what i'm talking about all right guys, so before we go any further, I want to explain to you that I really do like the Ansky S700 here. And I'm not picking on Ansky because this is a problem that's inherent of most manufacturers and most models that you find out there. So just be aware of that. And I wouldn't fix this on all bikes. In fact, I haven't fixed this problem on most bikes because I don't keep them. I plan to keep the Ansky S700 for a, a long time because I really like how it performs. I like that it's a smaller folding style bike and it's just a really fun bike to ride. So, so understand that's why we're doing this video. That's why we're actually changing it out because I want to keep this bike. So here's what we're doing. So we're cruising along now at about uh, 16 miles an hour. We're already in seventh gear over here. So we can't change our gears. We can't go any faster. But at 16 miles an hour, I'm going to bump it up to pedal assist four. I'm already starting to get ghost pedaling. I'm reaching 20 miles an hour right there and I'm ghost pedaling. And you can see how quickly I'm, I'm moving my legs already. But it's not a comfortable ride when you're ghost pedaling and you're trying to achieve, you know, there's 21 miles an hour. Because this bike is capable of a lot faster. And we're going to stop here and turn around so we don't run into the traffic up there. So the point is, you know, we want to be able to stiffen up the, the crank, you know, make it feel a little more resistance when we're riding at those higher speeds, and that's what we're going to do. That's what changing out that front crank is going to achieve for us. Now let's go back, change out the crank, and see how it performs. Alright, so let me show you what I, what I purchased. I purchased a 52 tooth crank, because what's on there is a 48 tooth. And you'd be surprised him by adding just four more teeth, uh, what a difference it makes. So this is the crank for one side. And we do have the crank arm in the box for the other side. And also in the box is a little bit of hardware that's kind of hard to see. The way it's all wrapped up, it looks like trash. But uh, there's a couple of our bolts that hold it on. All right, guys, in order to get this off here, you do need a special tool. And I'll put a link in the description to help you find it. But basically, it comes as a little kit with all of the things that you might need to be able to pull the crank arm off. I put mine in a nice heavy-duty sandwich bag because it helps me keep all the parts together. First, we'll use this giant Allen wrench in order to take this center screw out, or this center bolt. And we're going to set that aside. Now, at this point, you would think this whole thing would come off. And the reason it doesn't is the shaft that runs between here is got a taper on one end and so this is actually pressed on pretty hard so you can yank and jerk on it and most likely you're not going to get it off we can get this chain out of the way too so by pu simply pulling the slack holding the pedal so it doesn't rotate we can take that chain off and just slip it out of our way have a rag handy okay now this tool here is two pieces and, and it helps if you take this off because We need to attach our wrench, which is right here. It slides in over the end so that it gets in there and grabs that. Now we're going to take this and we're going to put it back on. 
Now, once we attach this and we start cranking and tightening it up, you see how it pushes out? And what it's doing is it's pushing on the center right here, and it's going to force this crank to come off. So let's get this started. All right, you may need, may need to use a, an adjustable wrench here just so you have a little bigger wrench so you can get some more leverage on it. It's going to feel like it's going to tighten up before it starts to loosen up and fall off, basically. So there it goes. I can use this attached wrench here. And the whole thing just slides right off. Unscrew your wrench, your tool. Comes back off, set this aside. All right, now that you have the crank off on this side, it's time to jump over to the other side and do the same thing to get this side off. Okay, off camera, I got the other side removed. So now it's time to go ahead and fit the new crank on. And this is square. You can find these shafts. Sometimes they're square, sometimes they're round. Of course, square is better because it keeps things from actually slipping. Okay, it's just uh, it's what we want and it's what we want to see. Uh, so this one, it happens to be square. This is a square um, on the inside here for the crank. So we're good there. So now we're just going to go ahead and see how this fits on. So we're going to slip it on there. And at this point, all we need to do is reattach these screws because as you tighten up this screw, as you tighten up this screw, it's going to force the crank onto that shaft. Now, when you get ready to put the crank on the other side, make sure that you don't attach it so they're both in the same position, right? Because you're going to have your pedals on the same side and, and you're going to look like this going down the road, right? So make sure that you install it so that it's opposite of where this pedal is going to be. And I will tell you right here that it would have been easier and what we should have done in the beginning was take our pedals off before we remove the crank arms. It's just a little easier because these pedals are on there kind of kind of tight and so now I'm going to have to try to monkey with this and hold on to it while I screw these pedals off. So it would have been a little easier. It could have saved you a few minutes of time. Okay, and most of you won't have a pedal wrench because, you know, you assemble your bike one time and, and that's it. You never use it again, right? But, you know, I think I spent like $10 on this one. And it sure is nice to have. And, and one of the reasons is it's crooked, right? It's got a handle on it that's crooked that allows you to kind of get in there and keep your, the rest of your hands and your knuckles out of the way from getting smashed. Also, it's a really thin wrench. So it fits nicely between the pedal and the crank arm. Whereas, you know, a traditional monkey wrench or something it's a little harder to get in there it's pretty tight you can usually get one in there uh, not always but and it sure is nice having a pedal wrench and guys just a little tip for you uh you know one thread of the pedals or one of the pedals will have a thread that's reversed and if you're confused about that and you're having a hard time getting it started you're not sure if you're going the right way uh, just remember that the pedal always spins towards the front so for instance this one here is going to rotate clockwise and the one over there on that side rotated counterclockwise from here getting the chain on should be pretty easy because we do have you know we have the chain that's on the derailleur back here and so we have that extra uh, to work with. We just got to get it around and over and on and release it. Okay, in all, it took about, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes to make this swap. Uh, it was pretty simple and easy to do. But before you go buying a crank and go buying tools, uh, you know, to change out whatever model bike that you have, take a look at your bike first to make sure it's going to work. Because number one, some bikes have a chain guard that, that is part of the crank or that it's attached separately up here. And it's not going to accommodate this larger crank wheel, okay? Um, in other words, you would have to remove the chain guard, possibly. Another common problem that you'll find is when you get ready to put on a larger chain ring right here, um, there may not be enough room, depending on how the back of your bike or the bike frame is made, um, sometimes they'll hit the bike frame because the bike frame is really close there. 
and so it may not even accommodate a larger chain ring. So look at that first before you go through the trouble of, you know, making a purchase and, and buying a larger chain ring and tools. Hey, let's take this out for a ride and see how it does. All right, here we go. We're in pedal assist three. We're going to just zip on up here into a higher speed. We're at 20 miles an hour. There's no ghost pedaling. It feels, feels good. Not nearly pedaling as fast as I did before. And I'm already at 21 and a half. It's going to bump it up in the pedal assist five. So there's a little ghost pedaling right at 25. And I am starting to pedal pretty quick again. And there's 26. I can keep up with it better this time. But certainly, slow down here slightly, certainly around that 25 mile an hour mark or so, you know, that's pretty comfortable. 23, 24, that's a comfortable cadence. So that was a nice improvement. So that really helps improve your ride. Now they make chain rings that are a little bit bigger. So we could have done like a 53, um, you know, 53 tooth or something, and that would have helped improve the ride just a little bit more at that top end. I don't routinely max out, you know, ride 28 miles an hour all over the place. Um, I'm usually, you know, somewhere around that 15 to 20 or so, but this just ensures that we have a nice comfortable cadence at that speed. And then if I want to go faster, I'm able to go faster without ghost pedaling. So that's pretty nice. Now one thing to know is when you change out the front crank and make it bigger, what happens, because it kind of gives you more resistance and stiffen things up for you a little bit, at a slower pedal assist level, or even you know trying to get started right from a stopped position like this, it makes it just a little bit harder, right? So that's where you're going to have to use your gears, kind of gear down. Gear down, I'm in fourth gear, let's try it again. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can get started with that. And or you can just use your throttle to get started, right? Bump it up to pedal assist three. Get us going here. Go ahead and pop it back up in there. About seventh gear or so. Really good pedal resistance there. Nice and stiff. Bump it up in the pedal assist five. No ghost pedaling, 25 miles an hour. So it really improved things quite a bit. And like I said, they do make cranks even bigger than this. So, you know, you might find a, like a 53 tooth or a 54 tooth will give you just a slight improvement. And so, you know, if you like riding at that 28 miles an hour, you can probably achieve that with no ghost pedaling. So it's a pretty easy fix, you know, for $49. Plus, I don't know what the tool cost me, about 10 bucks, $12 or something. Then uh, you can do this at home yourself and... You can do this at home yourself and easily make this improvement and just improve your riding experience. Guys, that's going to be it for this video. So if you give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. Let me know if you like this video. If you're new here, subscribe. If you have any questions, drop them down below. I'll be happy to answer them for you. Hey, that's going to be it for this video. You guys ride responsibly and ride safe.